What's up, Liron here, and today you're gonna learn how to use the pencil lines as a guideline only and how to allow the paint, the watercolor, to do most of the work. I'm gonna show you using this painting process and we're gonna do most of the talking as we sketch and paint. So let's get started. So let me show you how pencil lines are only guidelines and you don't have to necessarily follow them to the T. I'm gonna set a horizon line uh, and I think I'm gonna put it around the middle. So it's gonna be something like this. And I'm just gonna block in the main shapes and I'm not gonna put in too many details because again, the goal is to show you how the pencil line is just something to guide us. Uh, and a good way of imagining that, uh, that I would recommend to you is imagine uh, that you're projecting a drawing onto a wall. So what happens when you're projecting, uh, like literally using a projector, what happens is that uh, the lines you get aren't really there. It's like a different dimension, if you will. That's how I like to treat it. Um, and as soon as you turn off the, the, the projector, they're not gonna be there. Okay, this is how I like to treat my pencil lines. And notice how roughly I draw all of this. Um, so the building goes all the way down to somewhere around here, but this is not important because we're gonna have the people. Now we have this um, line of the curb coming somewhere around here for the sidewalk. And then uh, I'm gonna start placing in the people. So we have the first person, I'm just gonna use some very ballsy lines. So here's her uh, head, somewhere around here, kind of like a triangle. And I'm gonna place in the body. And I know that a lot of people uh, skip the drawing stage and go straight to the, to the painting. And for this example, I would recommend you actually stick around and, and look at how, just how simplified the pencil lines can be. So that's uh, the woman at the very front, something like this. And again, it's not gonna be perfect because I'm really just placing in some rough lines. Then we have this person around here and he's a bit farther, but also a bit taller because the road is going up. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be his face and then his uh, upper body. And this is a really good scene to practice this kind of loose, uh, uh, sketching method. Now what you want to make sure is that the lower body and upper body are the same proportions, somewhere uh, along the same height, otherwise he's gonna look funny. And then there's cast shadows uh, all towards this direction. Actually one of his uh, legs is a little more to the back like so. And hopefully that'll make sense once I'm gonna add the paint. Now there's another person here that I do want to get in because they uh, do play an important role. So kind of like uh, that and also kind of mid-step. We're gonna figure these stuff out uh, later on. Again, cast shadows are really important. Now then we have just a bunch of people. So I'm gonna place in a few of them really far away. This is like shoulders and head. Some more shoulders and a head, like this. And just a lot of random heads. And that way you'll see how random really the pencil lines can be and how much of just a supportive role they play in the painting process. Drop some feet here and all of these are gonna have the cast shadows in the same direction. This is really important. All the way up to the left. This is just a crowd, okay? And I'm not gonna place in any of the details of the crowd almost. Now here we could add some architectural details but not too much, okay? Now we have these um, small poles. I want to actually make this a little lower, kind of around here, and we're gonna ignore this line. This line does not exist, okay? And then we have these sorts of poles. So I'm just gonna place in somewhere, uh, one around here. I always get these to look funny, so I'm gonna try and be a little more accurate this time. One around here and one outside the frame, possibly, or maybe around here. And then they all cast a shadow in the same direction of the people and it goes around the curb. Okay, this is important. Down and around. And now you get this sense of three-dimensionality. There is, of course, a bunch of people around here. This is a person. This is a person. Uh, now, there is this. Uh, there are some details on the building here. So I do want to uh, show some of that. Now I want to place in a sign here just to add some interest. So probably around here because it's going to be a rather tall sign. So you know like the classic Alvaro Castanet signs that he puts everywhere. So like this, maybe it says no entry, maybe it says something else. We'll see about that. Probably no entry. Uh, it is no, en no entry street. Uh, and then there's the tree here, some things in the background. 
Uh, and because we're painting again against the light, we don't need a lot of information. This is this kind of, uh, I don't know, a preparation for, uh, for sh shading something to shade this. Uh, here we have some architectural details and this is pretty much all we need. Let me hold it up close to you so you can see. And I barely took uh, the pencil off the paper here. Of course, we need to make sure we get all of these cast shadows of the people. But again, I barely took uh, the pencil off the paper. Uh, so uh, now I'm gonna prepare stuff and we'll start with painting this. And I just wanna uh, give you another note. I deliberately painted the scene again very, very uh, roughly and lightly because what I wanna prove to you here is that when you don't use too many pencil lines, you let the paint do its job, okay? And this is really important, I find, to allow the paint to do its thing. Now, we're working against the light, so everything is gonna be very light, but the shadows on the buildings. So I'm gonna start with a super light wash. All I care about is the sky and the building. This is what I'm literally visualizing here. So I'm gonna start with just a very pale wash for the sky. Not too much going on here. There's a bit of a hair of the brush. I'm working at a slight angle, so around um, I would say, I don't know, uh, 20 degrees max, I think. And notice how roughly I can uh, treat this scene now because there isn't really an awful lot of details. I could kind of try and put in some straight clouds or anything like that. Now I'm gonna switch gears and move on to a warmer wash. I already have some warm wash prepared here from a previous painting and I'm gonna place that in because these buildings are warm, essentially. Um, I'm gonna add a bit more red to it. I'm using a uh, some kind of a perlin red. All of my paints are Daniel Smith. And notice just how loosely I can paint this. And this is so freeing and fun. Um, and I don't even need to worry too much about the highlights, but I'll probably just leave a few stray highlights here and there. Maybe I can use them later on. Uh, and you, uh, you know me, you know I don't usually paint this uh, this loosely, but I am also wanting, I, I do want to train myself to work this loosely, so, uh, so here you go. Now I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I'm gonna cover most of the highlights, really. Maybe I'll just leave some kind of a highlight on, uh, this woman at the front, and I may kill off that. You know what, let's cover everything. Let's cover everything with a very pale and light wash. I don't need too many highlights here, maybe just around there. And I do want to create some interest, so I could use, I'll use two uh, negating paints with these two. So I think I'm going to use a strong blue for this guy's shirt, like so. And this is really going to be visible later on, okay? So a strong blue here. And then for her shirt, I'm going to use a strong red. This will create a nice little contrast between the two. And notice how much fun I'm having. I'm not too worried about anything, really. And then I'm just going to kind of allow for a grayer blend for the rest of their uh, body and of course down to the uh, street here. And I'm gonna add a bit more uh, wet and wet in just a moment just to get out some more details and to make sure everything is tight uh, in the spots necessary. So here we go. I'm gonna add just a bit more red paint to her shirt to make it more permanent. As you can see, it's starting to um, lose some of the humidity, but very gently and very slowly. So I can start placing in this kind of red. And for this person, I'm gonna uh, repeat the blue a bit just to make sure that it has its prominence there. And I know it may look strong, but it's gonna all disappear in just a few moments, so don't worry about it. And I think this is it. Now it's time to allow this to dry. And as you can see, very light, very uh, loose wash. You can play around with the angle a bit, influence how the water flows. I think I'm gonna leave it level for a while. In the sun, allow it to dry and we'll be back. Okay, so this is now fully dry. Um, and a couple of things. This wash is gonna do the heavy lifting for the entire painting, okay? This is the step in which we're gonna bring out most of the interest and the details. And we're gonna start with uh, this beautiful um, balcony fence pattern here. We're gonna take it down, continue with uh, this uh, additional balcony, connect it all the way to the center mass, do some wet and wets, 
connected to this building in which some of it is going to be in the light okay light kind of comes from back but it does hit this building work around that connected to the entire people here it's just one big lump of of a, a dark to mid value uh, and then we're going to darken things up a little more even towards these people just to bring them more to the front so let's get started this is the hardest wash uh, and this is when this is the stage at which you have no idea how you're gonna do um I want to neutralize it quite a bit. Okay, I don't want it to be um, too uh, too strong, no matter what. Like not too much green, not too much purple, not too much red, not too much anything. Um, so now I have a bit of a grain mixture here, and I'm gonna get started. I'm using a thick brush uh, on purpose because I do want to challenge myself a bit with the details and and to not lose that looseness. So here is the main mass of the building. I'm gonna connect there is this area here that's connected and I get some criticism for using too big of a brush sometimes but I'm fine with that I may switch just for the really small details uh, to the smaller brush but I actually like uh, the fact that I am forced to think how to work with it I am gonna switch to this smaller one just for some of this uh, these lines that are connecting here I do want the sky to show through that's my main point here. So this is that. Now I can start adding in, maybe have it a little bit of a bias towards one color or another, you know, maybe towards red, maybe towards yellow. Here we have another balcony like so. And this is all gonna dry again a little lighter. Here we have this kind of line like this. Here we do have, and I'm just taking it slowly, but not too slowly. Here we have a bit of uh, some details here towards this kind of a balcony like so. Let's add a bit more water and a bit more warmth to it. Just doing all sorts of mixing here and trying to find the right balance for whatever it is I'm doing. Uh, and here's where also I'll need to leave some highlights just to create some interest. I'm not sure if in this building I'm gonna leave too many of them. Um, and I'm gonna get this line all the way towards the people here, like so. And this is gonna be kind of my stopping line, okay? Because where I reach the people, there's gonna be quite a lot of highlights, so I can use that to stop my wash, like this. And I'm gonna continue that in just a moment. So what I wanna do is charge it with a bit more paint and water, just to make sure I don't completely lose uh, this edge. And now I want to come back and do some wet and wet. And again, you see, you have to kind of work fast to get this to look right. Um, so here we go. A bit of shadow under this part. A bit of shadow like so. This entire section should be darker, so I'm going to darken it up. Later on, we can add some windows, wet and wet. I may put some kind of an indication for windows. Like this. But all of these details we're gonna be able to pull out of this uh, later on. Here are just a bit of these kinds of things. This shouldn't be here. I'm gonna get rid of these highlights. They're too strong and striking. Um, a few windows here and there and this is pretty much done. So uh, I'm gonna move towards the left here like so. Because there is this uh, low-hanging building that maybe it's not so low in the original, but I wanted to do it that way. Then there's the, the people here. Now, uh, these people, I'm gonna use a very um, abstract uh, approach to them. Uh, and I think I can switch to this smaller brush now. And I'm just gonna start filling in the, the area with some figure-like details and this is where I have to be a little more concentrated so sorry if I don't talk as much and I'm gonna use pure paints here and there but not too much like this this is, there's the cast shadows that are really important to get kind of like so And the most important part for me here is to avoid covering these two figures that are the closest to us. Now, a challenge you may uh, encounter when working that way and doing this 
uh, is that it's gonna be, and I'm just connecting this, uh, is that it's gonna be a little harder to tell where you are and what's there. So you have to first be a little concentrated and, and try and figure out what you're looking at. Uh, and so on, but second, it's just, some, uh, it's really hard to explain, but a lot of it is a matter of feeling. You just have to feel your way, feel your way, sorry, through uh, the painting. There is no other choice, um, as far as I know, in many of these cases, you have to kind of navigate very abstractly. Uh, and I'm fine with doing that sometimes, so now we go over this. Now, her head, the woman at the front is here, we're gonna continue with that later on. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna connect some areas here, some people, and, and uh, on purpose, again, I put not a lot of lines for myself to work from. Okay, I know that usually I will put a bit more details, but I really wanted this to be uh, light and loose and just a couple of hints of, you know, legs here, whatever it is. These people are gonna make things a little clearer. Now, I don't wanna overwork it or add too many details, so I'm gonna stop here. This side of the building is in the light, so I'm actually gonna put in some strong shadows. I'm uh, trying to figure out what I'm looking at. We have this palm tree here, so a bit of uh, green and yellow. And I'm gonna use some dry brush to get that in. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's a tree like so, and it connects all the way here. We actually have some other trees here, so I'm just gonna put in some foliage effects here and there. Um, compositionally with this building, I don't know if it works the best that it could, uh, but I hope it's good enough. Now there's a lot of shadows falling off like that because of the angle of the building, so I do wanna get those in, and then maybe let's add a diagonal shadow over here at the bottom go over these imaginary people. This left side of the building is completely in the shadow. I'm gonna go for it like that. Very fast, I don't need to uh, worry about that too much. There's, there's not an awful lot of details there. Um, I do wanna connect some of these lines like so. Then we get this nice little triangle here. Probably should be more in the shadow. And there is on top of that this kind of a structure that I will get in. I don't know if that was necessary or not, but whatever, we got it in. And back to the people here. So there's a bunch of people. And uh, let's use a bit of yellow just for fun, like this. And I'm literally conveying the people with just a couple of dots of, of light. Putting it like that. Now here. Uh, more towards us. I want to warm it up a little, so I'm gonna use kind of an orange. I'm gonna place in these poles, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm following the direction of the curve here. Here as well, like so. Casting a shadow around like this. And hopefully it's clear enough. It may not be, but that's fine. Then there's another cast shadow like this. The, the sidewalk itself, I'm just gonna use some dry brush here with pure red, because I wanna, it is kind of, it has some hints of red. So I'm gonna do it like this, and like that, connect it to the shadow, just so that you can tell that there is a certain bump here, and I think that's good enough. Now these two people are what's really gonna bring out the scene, however I do need to close off some shapes to this side and add some cast shadows. And you can see, if you're lost, just take a few steps back, look at it from afar and you'll start figuring out what you're looking at, okay? Now, a couple of things. She is blonde, so I wanna get that effect in. Uh, he mostly just has dark values uh, on him. So I'm just gonna use a bit of uh, kind of purple, I would say. But here I need to make it a little stronger than the background. Uh, this is really important, and I want to make the background a little darker as well. That's not dark enough. Just so that I can bring out the shape of his uh, shirt properly. So kind of like that. So I'm cheating. I'm going back, but that's fine. Adding a bit of yellow here, neutralizing it. And here I'm going to put this down like so. This is his shoulders. His hand. And this I can cover up with just pure blue. Carefully painting around the most front figure. Like 
this. Now here it's a bit important that I get this part right. So I'm just going to put in one leg and the other and hopefully that will read well. Usually I don't lead the viewer outside of the the canvas or the, the paper rather but here I'm kind of doing that and that's fine so that's his foot hopefully that reads well. Now again she I'm gonna use some pure yellow on her and we'll see how that goes and then maybe I'll probably add some red but here we go. Now on her left there isn't any highlight, so I'm covering it up and it's gonna seep into the person in the background like so. And now I'm gonna add a bit of red to that. It's a bit of a green yellow, unfortunately, but that's fine. And here there's a shadow that's being cast. I'm gonna add a bit more red and use almost completely pure red like this on her back. And slowly but surely you can tell how the impression is made here there's a line going like so like this a bit of light under the arm just in case and adding just a lot of paint and, and water really I'm not too worried about that here adding a lot of paint and water and finally her pants are dark so I'm just gonna use some muted uh, muted mixture for that kinda like this Hopefully that makes uh, sense and you can tell how the everything pops and the, the details you can actually feel them and it's all thanks to just that feeling of, of the, the values and the light but you don't have to follow the the pencil lines uh, let's say to the T okay now uh, one last thing I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna add the sign here and I'm gonna let this whole dry and then I'm gonna uh, this whole thing dry and then I'm gonna add some details in a uh, dry brush and hopefully that'll make some more sense okay so this is fully dry now and just one nuance that I missed was that the ground should be a little darker than the sky and what ended up happening is in my case it's really light I'm not gonna fix that because I think it will lead to some overwork of this area and it's not like the most important thing Thing in the world but I will probably make a more detailed slower version of this and then I'll give it a shot and I'll probably uh, update you somewhere on, on Instagram or something like this I will give this one another shot so now I'm picking up a lot of dry paint from the palette uh, and I wiped some of it off on my paper towel here and I'm just gonna start putting in some of these small small details still too much paint uh, on the brush so some of these small details here uh, using this a very dry brush, some windows, and sometimes it's really hard getting the right balance with the dry brush, and that's fine, that's just part of it. I'm gonna put a bit of it here as well. What else? These windows are pretty much there. Let's pick up some more paint. So I don't want to add too much there, maybe here, some of these details. And this is it, I'm really close, to, funny enough, I feel it, I, I feel like I'm gonna overwork this really quickly if I don't be, if, I, if I'm not really careful. Some of the uh, tree branches could be a little darker, so I will add those like this, and you see how it brings out their shape in a way that actually makes sense, okay? Um, let's add a bit more of this greenish thing to the mix here, and the... the actual trunk should be a little darker uh, what else what else there is a bit of that here a bit of that kind of thing around there um, here on this side of the building there is a lot going on but I'll deduce it to that reduce it to that and now uh, I want to add that kind of sign here and I'm gonna use again pretty dry brush to do that I just am gonna use enough water for it to actually work uh, but not more than that so here's my lovely little red sign here the main part is gonna be the the pole on which it it is standing because that has to be really really dark um, so a bit of all of my primaries just to mix this kind of a black color I'm gonna try this in one go, but as you know, sometimes I mess these things up. Walking around the painting, trying to find a good angle. Let's see how, there is still too much uh, paint on the brush. So here we go. 
like this. And hopefully that makes sense. But the one thing I do need to make sure, and I messed it up a bit, I know I have. Just sometimes filming really <laughs> takes a lot of my attention away. So uh, in any case, I'm gonna add the cast shadow now, which is really important as well. So this one goes here, like this. Um, what else? I think this is pretty much done. What I will do is darken up some of this person's head just to bring it a little even more forward, like so. This I don't really want to touch too much. The one thing I did want to add is just a bit of darks here and there to the people in the crowd. Maybe also the windows, you know what, let's do some of the windows a little darker, a little more detailed here. Some windows here, the, the, the lowest uh, floor. Another one here, okay. So now, um, let's do that just randomly. I'm picking some, some people's heads and faces and darkening them, them. And you can see how that goes a long way in many cases. Now I'm gonna do the same, but for their clothes. So maybe this guy here with the, another red shirt is gonna mirror that kind of thing. Now I wanna use a bit more yellow on one of them. So let's do that or a bit more orange just to add some color. So maybe here, just a random person like that. Another one here. Uh, and then finally, let's do a bit more of a muted kind of thing. Maybe with the shirt here of this person, like this. And maybe even this guy here or this gal there. I don't know who they are. Um, and I think this is pretty much it. I got the variation I wanted. Um, I could use just a white gel pen to bring out some more details or add this white here to the sign, which isn't really that important to me. Um, so I, I don't know if I'll, if I'll even do that like this. Um, I think this part should be darker. This is actually the slowest step in some ways because you keep looking at it and you, you add and you remove and you fix and you correct and you do as much as necessary until it looks right. But with that, I think we're done and we can wrap up this process. Let me just show it to you a little more up close so you can see some of the details and I will wrap it up. So I really hope you enjoyed this process. All I did was add a bit of white here and just some small details. You pretty much uh, saw the whole thing. Now, don't forget to like this video. It really helps you to push it to more people and also to subscribe if you still haven't. I have tons of processes like this one. At the end of this video, I will link up the end screen annotations, will link up to a video that I think you're gonna really enjoy. Be sure to check that out in just one moment and I will talk to you again in another vid real soon.